One time I was behind the register at Victoria's Secret. This customer walks in and immediately everybody spots her as a red flag. She's just picking up items, throwing them in her bag, not looking at sizes, not looking at colors. So everybody's like, mm. everyone's on their walkie like. Watch this customer. She's coming to the fitting room. She's headed to the cash shop. Somebody get her. Check her ID. Get her. Get her. She has a bag full of stuff. And guess who gets her at the register? Me. So she comes to my register and she dumps out her stuff. And you know, we're having a regular conversation. Hi, how are you? Yada, yada, yada. Her total comes up to probably between $700 to $900. It was expensive. My manager is at the register next to me, talking to me on the walkie. Ashley, make sure you get that ID. Don't matter what she using, make sure you get that ID. So I ask her for the ID because she's paying credit. Why do you need to ask for my ID? Just take it. Run it. I'm like, no, ma'am. I'm sorry. I need your ID for the purchase. She starts to raise her voice at me. Story time of how we almost got kidnapped. So me and my best mate were having some cocktails by the river. It was summertime and time was flying by and it began to get dark. Bear in mind that the river to the main roads were like a 20 minute walk, so we were far from anyone and anything. The river was also quite hidden, so we agreed to go back before it started getting dark. It was a little scary, we had to go through the woods, and by the time we'd got onto this little motorway bridge, it was literally pitch back. And we still had so far to go. So we carried on walking, there was woods either side of us, and my friend legit made us stop because she had saw some bats, and I don't know why she thought they would stay there, but we ended up standing there for about 2 minutes. Dead ass, no joke, we were standing there and heard a whistle from the trees next to us. And when I tell you, we have never ran so far and so fast in our lives. It was horrifying, we still had to go over another little bridge, we had to go through train tracks and cow fields. We got over this river bridge and legit was running for our lives. My friend looked back and this guy was about two feet away from us. I'm running out of time, so like part two. Story time, my roommate took from a sugar daddy edition. So we were at uni and let's give her a code name, Nancy. So she would legit pay for everything, our drinks on nights out, our meals, our taxis on the way home. So we just thought she was like really rich. Until one day she legit broke down into tears in front of us and confessed everything. She had been maxing out her dad's credit card. Four to five grand down. She was petrified she had used all of her uni allowance and then went to the Golden Glory, her dad's bank card. His bank card. We were shocked. We legit laughed through her pain, but Jerry just assumed she was, like, loaded. When I tell you, she paid for everything. Then, as a joke, we was like, why don't you get a sugar daddy? Like, he can pay for this. She came back with this whole story. She had been on a date with this guy. She had drinks with this guy. And he legit laid that money out on the table, told her to took it, and went because she clearly needed it. Until this day, she still uses that sugar daddy. This is my first ever story time, so like and follow my Instagram for more. I can't take it off. I can't take it off. Like, take it off. I can't. Take it off. I can't take it off. Like, take it off. I can't. Take off the look at me. Just look at her. It's my first summer time since 2021. What should we get out of first? Is it weak? Click the stairs dry. Oh, now that my hair's out of there, these lashes. my roommate took from a sugar daddy edition so we were at uni and let's give her a code name nancy so she would legit pay for everything our drinks on nights out our meals our taxis on the way home so we just thought she was like really rich until one day she legit broke down into tears in front of us and confessed everything she had been maxing out her dad's credit card four to five grand down she was petrified she had used all of her uni allowance and then went to the golden glory her dad's bank card his bank card we were shocked. We legit laughed through her pain, but Jerry just assumed she was, like, loaded. When I tell you, she paid for everything. Then, as a joke, we was like, why don't you get a sugar daddy? Like, he can pay for this. She came back with this whole story. She had been on a date with this guy. She had drinks with this guy. And he legit laid that money out on the table, told her to took it, and went because she clearly needed it. 
Until this day, she still uses that sugar daddy. This is my first ever story time, so like and follow my Instagram for more. Story time about the psycho neighbor that stalked me. So, when I graduated college, I moved into a new apartment. When I first got there, I was moving my things in, and my neighbor introduced himself and helped me move a couple of things upstairs. After we had got done, he asked for my number, but I told him I wasn't really looking for a relationship. But he said, let's just swap numbers just in case, you know, a fire happens. So, I gave him my number, and I really didn't think nothing of it. Maybe a week later, he starts knocking on my door and giving me gifts just about every day, like teddy bears and flowers. Then maybe about two weeks later, I told him to stop because I wasn't really interested in him. So the next day, I wake up to make coffee and take out trash. When I pass my living room, the teddy bear gift that my neighbor gave me makes a click noise. When I quickly rip the teddy bear open, it's a camera inside. Like for part two about the psycho neighbor that stalked me. So, like I said earlier, the teddy bear gift that my neighbor had gave me makes a clicking noise. When I quickly rip the teddy bear open, it's a camera inside, and I go into a panic mode. Out of nowhere, there's a knock on my door, and it's my neighbor. He says, good morning, it's me again. You left your trash too close to the curb, so I moved it for you. I realized that my door was still open, so I try to run over and lock the door. But he just opens it. I yell at him, telling him to get out. He closes the door behind him and says, that's no way to talk to a neighbor. I start backing up. He looks over and sees that I ripped the teddy bear apart. I didn't know what else to do, so I just ran to my room. And he chases after me and pulls my hair. Like for part three. This is why you should never eat tasty cakes. And why I can't ever look at a coffee cake the same. So a couple years ago, my dad went to my uncle's house to come visit, but he was super hungry. He asked my uncle if he had any snacks. My uncle, of course, said yes. Then my dad went to his kitchen and saw that he had tasty cake, coffee cakes. Boy, he was excited because my dad loves sweets. He went to go sit down to watch the game with my uncle, but when he took a bite of the cake, he said it tasted really moist. He ate half of it, then noticed that some of the crumbs on the tasty cake disappeared. When he took a better look at the cake, he realized that the tasty cake crumbs were maggots. This is the reason why girls lie about having a boyfriend when guys try to talk to them. Last week, there was a woman in Harlem, New York, and she was brutally attacked by a man after turning him down. This 31-year-old mother went to go buy a bottle of wine after work. Two men walked in the store and one of them offered to pay. And she politely declined and said no thank you and that she could pay for it for herself. When she got ready to walk out, the men basically said that she thinks she's better than them. The men followed her out and threatened that what was she going to do about it. So she tried to ignore them and go about her day. Then they chased her across the street, kicking her, and one of the men tried to bite her eye out. But ended up biting her forehead, leaving a deep wound. She was screaming and she just wanted to get her daughter. Story time on how I accidentally joined a cult. And the guy who was the head leader, I soon found out that he was a pedophile. At the time, I just graduated high school and I was not planning on going to college. So all I really did was work. At my job, I met this guy and we're going to call him Devin. Devin was sweet, but he was so into spirituality and connecting with God. We started talking, then dating, and he asked me if I could come to his church. And when I was younger, I used to go to church, but I stopped going. No real reason why, but I thought it was my calling to reconnect with God again. When we go to his church, slash, aka, the cult. When I first go in, there's like 10 people in the church, and it was run down. It looked like we were in someone's house. When we walked down the aisles, Devin introduced me to their head leader, which they called Father God. He told me that my clothes were too revealing and he literally slashed my ass and laughed. Like for part two. This is part two of how I accidentally joined a cult and the guy who was head charge was a pedophile. So like I said earlier, we met his pastor, which they called Father God. The first thing he do is basically say that I look like a slut because the clothes I was wearing and slapped my ass. I looked at Devin, the guy that took me to their church, aka the cult. He laughs and tell their father God that next time he would tell me about their dress code. After that, we go sit down and I tell him that I was ready to go. 
he tells me to hold on and just please listen to the service. Anyways, when their father God starts service, he goes in about women and what they should wear, tell them the only way to be a pure woman is to obey their man and blah, 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 and dress godly. Just the most insane things ever. And everyone in there were like hypnotized and catching Holy Ghosts, jumping up and down, rolling on floors, passing out, crying. Their father God calls me up and asks if he could use me as an example. When I stand up, he fills my breast saying that I'm a temptation for married men. Life for part three. One.